Hello everyone, my name is Wale Farron. I'm a tech entrepreneur and you are watching Tech Roundup, your weekly opinion, views and analysis of the top tech events happening around the world with a focus on Nigeria. On Tech Roundup this week, we'll review the new partnership between InterSwitch and American Express and we discuss the role of e-government in governance in Nigeria with a special assistance to the president on new media. There's an exciting pitch from a startup and we'll wrap up the episode with number of the week. As always, the show is packed, so let's get started. Last week, there was another exciting announcement in the Nigerian fintech space. InterSwitch announced a new partnership with a leading card scheme, American Express. The agreement will see InterSwitch assume responsibility for managing American Express merchants in Nigeria while bringing new merchants onto the platform. Previously, American Express card members could only use their card at select locations across the country. The new partnership broadens the acceptance to InterSwitch merchants, ATM, and website nationwide. The partnership with InterSwitch will enable American Express card members to transact using a wide range of merchants who process payments through the InterSwitch platform for a range of retail, travel, hospitality, dining expenses, as well as ATM withdrawals. The partnership will also allow InterSwitch to integrate its network of merchants in Nigeria into the global American Express network. For background, Nigeria's journey to digital payment has been largely driven by cards, mostly debit and prepaid, with over 80 million cards already issued to customers, majority, close to 60%, being MasterCard. There's always been a concerted effort by players, including yours truly, to increase acceptance by bringing more merchants into the network and providing them tools to accept card payments. To be clear, this move by InterSwitch is an acquiring play only, at least as far as we know. InterSwitch will not be issuing American Express cards. You recall that it has its own indigenous card network called Verb. But generally, I think this is a great development for the Nigerian market in the following ways. One, this broadens international acceptance. Many travelers, business and tourists travel with American Express cards, so they will be able to use their cards in more places in Nigeria. And we imagine that priority will be on the hospitality industry where travelers interact the most. Two, this enables American Express to witness potentials in the Nigerian market and may inspire them to open their issuance in the Nigerian market, maybe in partnership with other fintechs. And lastly, this could potentially drive volume for merchants through increased sales and acceptance. We'll continue to watch the partnership and report anything newsworthy in the near future. To our next story, today we are discussing government and technology. He government is often defined by the use of information and communication technology to improve the activities of public sector organizations. The promise of e-government and its more recent spin-off of e-democracy, e-participation, e-procurement and a range of e's is to engage the citizens in government in a user-centered manner but also to develop quality government services and delivery systems that are efficient and effective. User-centered e-government suggests that government will provide services and resources tailored to the actual service and resources needs of the users, including citizens, residents, government employees, and others. The Nigerian government, especially at the federal level, has been adopting technology to drive government in the last few years, partly to drive efficiency and in some cases, it's just the right thing to do. Some of the examples you may be familiar with include the following. One, it's recently a procurement platform for e-government projects. This is managed by the Bureau of Public Procurement for most agencies, and NIPEX specifically for the oil and gas industry. Uh, two, the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service just launched an e-tax platform that allows individuals and corporate entities file their tax returns. And three, you can now do name search and register your company online through the CAC platform. And the list goes on and on. But the question is, 
how well are these platforms being used? What metrics are we using to measure their performance? Performance, and is there enough being done to enlighten the public about the existence and use of this platform? I had the privilege of speaking with Tolu Ogulesi, who is a special assistant to President Buhari on digital and new media. And we spoke about federal government initiative, a driving e-government and those designed to help entrepreneurs. Here's a part of that interview. The starting point to answer that question is, I don't know if you've heard about JEEP, the Government Enterprise okay, um, yeah. um, uh, Government Empowerment and Enterprise Program, okay. which is now the largest microfinance scheme of its kind, I think on the continent in Africa. Um, virtually every solution developed for that scheme was done locally by startups, by Nigerian companies, young people, Building, you know, because it's all about mobile wallets, it's about facial ca capturing the photos, biometrics. biometrics, all that stuff, you know. Um, I was just looking at the data for, for you know, for, for Jeep in terms of from technology point of view, you know, 7 million lines of code, you know, for, for across all the various platforms, 2 million beneficiaries, more than 2 million actually. As so last year, 2 million people had collected loans mobile wallets, all that stuff, you know, all of it locally done. So I think that the starting point is that there is a lot of opportunity for startups, for young businesses, you know, to, to do stuff in government. Okay. And that's where um, the social investment and those things come in, come in. you know. Um, so these things are happening. You know, Jeep is a fantastic example. They actually did a video, which is on YouTube about technology, how technology, the technology underpinning of Jeep. Okay. You know, so there are a lot of those opportunities. But, you know, the question as to how do young people then connect, how do they plug in? Um, it's one of the things that government did was set up um, uh, the, the, um, something called the Industrial Advisory Council okay. and Competitiveness Council, okay. which, which, which has, of course, it has sort of like older, more traditional business people on it, but also has like a subcommittee that is like young technology, uh, professionals, which was to serve as some kind of bridge between government and the private sector and young startups. The full episode of the interview will be available on Tech Roundup Talk this March. Our number of the week this week is 41 million. That's the number of card transactions on point of sale devices around Nigeria in January 2020. The ability to process other car schemes like American Express will increase this number and drive more income for merchants in Nigeria. Our startup profile of the week is New Hall, which is an AI solution that helps logistic companies monitor their operations. Here's the founder, Bright Williams. Hello, my name is Bright Williams and I am the co-founder for New Hall Technologies. Africa loans about $2 billion every year due to carbon sector and illegal this is because managers in their offices have no way of monitoring the activities of their trucks in the field or the state of the cargo. That is why we built Hola, an IoT and AI enabled platform that helps logistics companies monitor their operations in real time. We do this by tracking the location, most importantly the weight of the truck through our 80% cost effective hardware solution. For the past six months we've built our minimum viable products and have also been able to secure an LOI with a transport company with about 45 trucks. We are also in touch with a truck aggregator. We have been supported by the Facebook Accelerator Program, Tony Elimin Foundation, Zenit Bank and also Seed Space with seed capital of about $40,000. We'd love to hear your comments and feedback so please connect with me on LinkedIn at Wally Farron or subscribe to the Tech Roundup YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. If you're a founder, you should take advantage of our new startup profile and send us your video for a chance to be featured in the upcoming episode of Tech Roundup. Please also remember to listen to Tech Roundup on Techie Talk every Wednesday from 1.30 p.m. on Nigeria Info 99.3 FM if you're in Lagos. Have a great weekend, guys, and see you all again next week.